Uh, thank you guys. Firstly, thanks for joining in. Um, uh, you know, of course, it's 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 a Saturday evening and me calling you at this point in time certainly, certainly may not be giving a good taste to you. But guess what? We have a lot in store today. And what we are going to talk on is something that can be very relevant for all of you from your, your I would say, future standpoint. This, this primarily, I would say this... Uh, IFRS is is just the talk of the town and getting getting uh, uh, the hype that it that it deserves from the standpoint of MNC is really looking forward to it and all of us should surely know and understand as to what these this species is all about. So welcome guys, welcome to all about IFRS session. We really want to be understanding the IFRS on the whole in this session in, term, in terms of understanding what this IFRS is and of course what can you do if you have to in relation to this IFRS and what would that be and how would that be helping you from your futuristic goals standpoint. That's the agenda today. That's what we intend to cover. Some of the common doubts that I have and this is something that I've heard, I've seen, I've got from various students around the world and to many of my colleagues and students in India Many of, the, many of them have these doubts in terms of, you know, what this species is all about. Some of the, the, the doubts that I really want to call on is that what is IFRS? Will it add value to my CV if I really do something on that? Is that a question that you may have? If yes, hang on. We'll really talk on that in terms of, you know, what that is. What is the scope of IFRS? Sir? What kind of percent, what percentile of companies have adopted IFRS in India? Do this has any kind of, you know, does this has any kind of scope for us to really be, be getting some kind of a break in, in, in IFRS world. I have the knowledge of India's. Will the content be similar? That is again a question that is very prominent. I've just given my CA final and result is awaited. Can I study you know, diploma in IFRS within three months? Again, something to really, really, really be talking about. I have the knowledge about IFRS because I have done something in relation to that. Do I still need a diploma? Do I still need some kind of a certification in relation to that? Again, something to be picked up. What all certifications are there? How does diploma in IFRS benefits me? Can an average CA student clear the IFRS course? What is the pass percentile of diploma in IFRS? NDS versus IFRS, if I study IFRS, will that help me understand NDS too? And I can tell you one question that is not, not being here is that I'm a fully qualified chartered accountant. Will diploma in IFRS will add value to my, my CV? That is again something that, that is very prominent and that is what we're getting across across the you know i would say student fertility and that's what we intend to really resolve and of course talk on in this session is that is that something that you also have in your mind i'm sure you may have and if you have then i have few slides to be shared with you shall we go ahead yes sir all right now this is the agenda that i have for today I have briefly spoken on that in terms of that we should be spending some time in terms of understanding as to what the IFRSs are all about. We'll talk on what is the scope of the IFRS in India, outside India. Why should you be doing IFRS? What is diploma in IFRS by ACCA? We'll talk on that. We'll spend some time on it. What is the time fee structure eligibility of the IFRS? Again, it's again something we should be spending time on. And towards the end, we really want to take a break and, of course, give you an opportunity to really ask questions if you may have any. So any questions that you may have, we'll pick it up. We'll try sorting that out and we'll try discussing that and, of course, addressing that as much as possible. We'll talk on that too. Does that sound like a plan? Yes, sir. All right. Moving on, my friend. The first thing first is what is international financial reporting? standard. Mm -hmm. IFRS stands for International Financial Reporting Standards. As I've already said that, I would say this is nothing but the common accounting language to be used around the world. Now, if I'm, if I'm, uh, you know, if I'm really uh, uh, going to circle off as to what you would have done by now, if you're, if you're studying in India, you must have gone through the Indian accounting standard, ACA, the NDS, wherein you would have um, learned in terms of you know what the accounting would be and how one should do accounting in different kind of scenarios. Be it the revenue recognition, be it the lease accounting, be it the accounting for tax and so on and so forth. You would have gone through various accounting standards in terms of understanding as to what those accounting standards are and what you would be doing in that kind of a scenario when you will get in 
and of course you have to apply and do some kind of treatment to these nuances you would be following a particular index and applying that on the same lines on the same lines you have ifrs my friend international financial reporting standards that also mandates a particular treatment to be given to a transaction based on standards that are acceptable globally now indian accounting standard would be applicable and of course acceptable in india only they do not have any global global standing per se however if you really have to see the you know the the kind of framework we are in or the kind of geographical issues that we are, we are really really facing right now at this point in time one company has existence in various various countries and that is the reason they have to follow one set of accounting rules so that they can really consolidate they can really compare they can really have an understanding as to what is happening on the other side of the country or a different country and so on and so forth and that is the reason ifrs has has given them an edge in terms of having the common accounting language to be used in all of the companies that they have or all of the countries in which they had the existence they are basically the accounting standards having a global recognition and thus having the uh, edge of providing the common accounting language across the globe if i really have to talk on what the accounting standards are if i'm really talking to someone who is not aware of it let me just tell you accounting standard is nothing but the guidelines or the standards that are issued by the expert accounting body like in our case it is the institute of chartered accountants of india which really gives the the nas to be to be applicable and of course accepted to the to the uh, companies working across india that helps to provide the direction for accounting of various types of transaction which covers the aspects like recognition measurement presentation and disclosure we all know that sir we have all seen this that this 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 is something that we have started learning whenever and wherever we started learning accounting from because we know these are the accounting standard we really need to know and of course address whenever we face any situation in relation to the treatment of a particular transaction that's what you would have learned if you really want to talk on the indian context it is the indas if you really want to talk on the global context it is ifrs is that clear guys yes sir now we do have different set of accounting standards across the world and of course you know i have really bought few of here just to make sure that you really understand for example we have indas that is applicable in india we have us gap that is united states general accounting and, and generally accepted accounting principles that is nothing but the us accounting standards and then you have the ifrs which is the international financial reporting standard that is applicable and acceptable in europe and the rest of the world we have us gap which is primarily accepted in us and then you have the ifrs which is broadly accepted in the europe and the rest of the world india has their own accounting standard as we may understand that is that clear guys yes sir now this effectively gives you the pedigree in terms of you know what the ifrs is is really holding and what is that really meaning to the world at large now why ifrs you know and as i think i broadly mentioned that when i was talking in terms of you know you having an existence in two different countries three different countries and maybe more if you have that how can you have a unified unified books of accounts which are based on one accounting standard let's say you have one country in india and one sorry one company in india and one company in say europe and maybe one company in say middle east how would you manage the accounting reporting compliances how would you manage the comparison how would you manage the analysis how would you manage the overall consolidation you face so many issues if all of these companies are being maintained on the specified local local accounting standards you have that kind of a problem ifrs really comes to your rescue my friend wherein that really provides you provides you with the unified standard that can really really help you in terms of how you would be managing these companies considering the considering the unified globally accepted accounting standards that is nothing but the ifrs which is the international financial reporting standard that can be can be done in all of these three countries you can prepare your standard basis this 
that would help of course consolidation that would help in better comparison the enhancement of the understanding and of course that would meet the global standards of the of the market that you have to deal with on the global basis that is the reason my friend ifrs is really in and many many of the companies have adopted that and they want all of the books of accounts to be there on the ifrs and that is one of the reason my friend ifrs professionals are very well in demand they are needed by various corporates they are needed by various big fours because they know that they have to have to comply with the global set of accounting standards for that companies for that company's state of affairs is that clear guys yes sir moving on to the you know the benefits that we may have you know from the ifrs i think we have we have covered that at length it certainly helps you to have the high quality internationally recognized set of accounting standards that bring what that bring the transparency accountability and of course efficiency to the financial markets around the world because you would only have one set of financials my friend and not like you know many that you may have to manage on the individual basis and also on the consolidated basis is that clear guys yes sir now what is the scope of ifrs you know enough we have spoken enough we have heard sir enough we have been talking on the ifrs and of course we being the C ca students we being the bcom graduates we being the ca qualifieds we hear a lot on the ifrs side but what does that really mean from the scope that i may have if i really pursue that now i can tell you one thing which i have written as the first line of the slide which is that if you really want to be part of the future of the finance world you have to know the ifrs the future of the finance would certainly 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 be talking to ifrs in some way or the other and if you really want to go ahead early you board better you are because that is certainly going to be the future the way the companies are accepting ifrs is certainly calls out for many and many and many professionals the more i would say early you'll get in the best you are from the standpoint of having that kind of a growth it is globally recognized by more than 140 countries and expanding many of the countries have already accepted it and of course the number is really going up so more and more you would really uh, want to do globally you have to have to know something like ifrs to really give you an edge huge opportunity to work with global companies we understand that overseas career opportunities again a subset of what i just spoke in demand my friend this is really in demand the mncs and the big fours you just go and type on the google the the ifrs jobs in india ifrs jobs in you know uk ifrs jobs in xyz country you would get to know kind of jobs opportunities that these organizations have and guess what since the demand is more more than the supply the compensation is also high in comparison to the local qualifications that is the reason if you have this kind of a qualification on to your badge your market value really enhances in terms of giving you an edge and of course getting better compensation from the market it certainly have the better growth prospects the better promotions the higher salaries the new client base if you are really practicing something if you are a practicing chartered accountant then also this is very helpful because it will certainly help you provide and of course deal with the you know company which are based in ua in uk outside uk and so on and so forth so that certainly gives you an edge in terms of managing those uh, operations managing those you those companies and of course coming up with the flying colors there is that clear guys yes sir moving on my friend uh, this is the list that you know i i i just thought i'll share it with you what i did in the morning was i just typed on um, google in terms of you know the jobs that are, you know that are there for the ifrss and all of the names that i've seen on this screen are the ones who are right now looking at ifrss professionals to be hired and of course to be working for them in their own companies isn't that a great news guys and in in the, you know isn't that something to be really aspiring and of course aspirational to look forward to because if you get to have some kind of qualification like this and of course if you can get into some kind of corporates like what you have on the screen right now i'm sure the growth path that you would have is going to be going to be very different isn't that a great news yes sir i'm just trying to make you awake guys so that you're not not sleeping and of course that really calls out for that really calls out for the sense check 
guys am i clearly audible am i clearly visible why don't you just give me a thumbs up or a confirmation that you are able to hear me out rightly all righty thank you again going back in terms of you know what we have in the presentation why me being a ca being a ca student or a bcom graduate or anyone should do i farris i think we have covered this sir uh, we have covered in terms of you know how would this help me in terms of my growth in terms of my my aspiration that i have for me going out in future it certainly provides me the gateway to the global finance global finance of the global companies it really helps me having the better better growth opportunity in terms of giving me an edge it offers you the strong edge that can really shift your career and of course bring it up to the speed that you really want it can really open up your gate for the overseas job opportunities because this is being accepted around the world so if you have that kind of uh, an edge that can give you uh, an opportunity to work abroad nothing like that you can certainly shift your you know to the global client base in case you are practicing chartered accountant you can certainly shift to the global clients because if you would have a qualification like this that would help you in terms of being a practice chartered accountant to handle handle various global companies it can really create an alternate career opportunities while doing ca because if you are doing ca and of course if you are qualified as a ca you, that can this this qualification like this or a or a ifr the ifrs can certainly help you in terms of exploring out ways which you would have never thought of because you can explore out companies which are only and only hiring ifrs as professionals so if you know that you can be there and of course get into the limelight as soon as possible you can certainly utilize your time also my friend post your exams because ifrs as an exam if i am in a, in a while we'll talk on the diploma in ifrs diploma in ifrs as an exam is is you know just take 4 to 5 months of time to prepare and of course there is only one exam there you just need to prepare for 4 to 5 months and just go and kill that exam and of course it is not that difficult that does the you cannot crack that out so you know you can certainly utilize your time post your exams when you have given that and of course you have time to prepare for something else this can be an alternate and a one, one of the best opportunity that you can really crack on with is that clear guys yes sir moving on guys what we have is what is acca diploma in ifrs now many of the students i can tell you many of the students they who know um, and who are understanding ifrs is they are looking forward to as to what can they do in ifrs they really want to do something in ifrs but what is the opportunity that they have is something that they are not aware of as in what can they do to excel in ifrs now you have effectively two big of op time options to really do something in ifrs and one of the option is to do acca as a whole which is like you know acca stands for the association of chartered certified accountants so you can effectively become a global ca by doing acca because acca is recognized in more than 180 countries so one option is that you complete your acca in totality because acca has the ifrs curriculum so you effectively go through the entire ifrs and become an ifrs professional but that effectively means that you have to give like 13 exams because acca has 13 exams of course they would give some some exemptions basis your qualification because if you are a become graduate you get some exemptions if you are a chartered accountant student you get some exemptions if you are chartered accountant qualified uh, candidate you get different kind of exemptions so you have exemptions in terms of you not supposed to give some kind of exams because basis the exemptions some exams would be waived off to you that can really happen but still you have to give various exams to qualify as the acca in the whole however if you really want to do something only and only in ifrs there is one more option that you have that is diploma in ifrs where an acca provides the diploma diploma in ifrs which anyone and everyone can have which is a very very well recognized qualification to really learn what the ifrs standards are all about and what all are the practical implications of the ifrs to the industry at large international financial reporting standards are being mandated now in more than 100 countries worldwide which effectively means that you would get an opportunity to work in those countries because you would have that kind of a qualification it is specially crafted and drafted for the for the finance professionals 
who are looking forward for having the detailed understanding of the IFRS because many of the folks, you may not have the IFRS qualification, but you may be working in the company which are exposed to the IFRSs because they are needed to comply with that. If that is the case, finance professionals are very well in demand and you really need some kind of an extra knowledge in order to handle that organization. And for that, Diploma in IFRS is an excellent qualification to have. It certainly provides you the practical and the detailed knowledge that you need from the international financial reporting standpoint, wherein you can interpret, you can apply, you can understand, you can comply, you can analyze the global, global financial reporting on the large. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, coming on to my friend, the eligibility, you know, this is, this is the most, I would say, uh, commonly asked questions as far as the as far as the diploma in IFRS is concerned, because many of the folks, they really want to understand that I think I should do it, but am I eligible for it or not? What is the eligibility criteria for the ACCA diploma in IFRS? I can tell you one thing. You only and only need to be a graduate to be eligible for the diploma in IFRS course. Only a graduate who is having two years of relevant accounting experience. If you are the one, you are eligible because that is the minimum requirement. Anything above that is absolutely acceptable. So if you're a BCom having two years of relevant accounting experience, you're eligible for that. If you're a BCom plus CIPCC, you're eligible. If you're a CIPCC cleared student, you're again eligible. Of course, you have to have the two years of accounting experience, and that is where your article chip also really works in. And of course, it really, you know, is, is really true because they accept that if you have that experience and have that qualification, which is a BCom, MCom, or a CIPCC being cleared and having a two years of relevant experience, you are completely there to really apply and do this ACCA diploma in IFRS, which is something that is very well, very well there in all of you. If you are a chartered accountant or a CMA, you are anyway qualified and it goes without saying, because if you are a BCom, MCom and CIPCC cleared, if that is, that is eligible, then chartered accountant and CMA who are qualified, you know, are surely be eligible any which ways for that. And that is something you have to have at the back of your mind. Of course, you know, there are some other things also that are there where you, if you are an ACCA affiliate, then also you're eligible. If you have three years of accounting experience, then also you're eligible. If you have two years of accounting experience and you have a certificate in international financial reporting, then also you are, you are eligible. But if you, I really have to talk on from the Indian context standpoint, if you are a BCom, if you are MCom, if you are a CVA IPCC cleared candidate, who has the two years of relevant accounting experience, including including your article chip, it is absolutely fine. You can just go and hit this exam in the best possible way. If you're a qualified chartered accountant and a CMA, again, you're qualified. Just go ahead, my friend. Go ahead and kill this exam. We're there for you. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. Moving on, my friend. Moving on, we have the time and the fee structure for the ACCA. Let me tell you. The ACC exams are happening twice a year. In June and December, it is only one exam, my friend. That is that is computer-based exam, and it is only on the financial reporting. As in, you would be given various, you will be taught various various international financial reporting standards, and of course, this is an exam is a mix of practical and theoretical. Uh, I would say content, they would ask certain questions and of course they would give you some numericals to be sorted out basis those IFRSs and that is what is needed in order to qualify this exam and of course hit there in the best possible way. One thing to note over here is that exam happens in June and December and there's only one exam so you effectively get five to six months of time to really prepare and kill this exam in the best possible way and I think one exam five to six months is good enough a time to really kill over there. From the registration standpoint, the IFRS registration, you know, I'm just talking on the fee structure, the diploma in IFRS registration has to be done. So initially you would do an initial registration, which is of 89 pound, which is like what, 9,000 rupees or so. And then you have the exam fees to be given, which is like what, 123 GB, GBP, which is like, again, you know, 12,000 rupees. So 9,000 rupees of registration and 12,000 rupees of, let's say, exam fees will be like what, 21,000 rupees. 
this kind of fees that ACCA really calls out for in order to you being there and give this exam. And then, you know, anything, in, you know, anything over and above that would be your coaching fees that you have to spend in order to be ready to give this exam in the best possible way. But this is the only expense that you have. Very, very economical in terms of the, 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 the fee structure also. Very prevalent in terms of the acceptance and very, uh, I would say, I'll not say easy, but very, um, uh, I would say, um, at, at least from the timing standpoint, you can certainly target that because it is only one exam and that to two times in a year. So you can really prepare that. So very friendly, also flexible, also from the standpoint of appearing on the exam and of course, coming up with the flying colors. Now, if I really have to talk on, you know, in terms of, you know, what FinTram really offers, you know, FinTram is certainly offering you uh, the ACCA diploma in IFRS course. We have students around the world who are doing, you know, diploma in IFRS with us and of course, appearing exam in their own countries. And of course, in India too, you know, and this is the course that we offer, which is like, you know, the full course on the diploma in IFRS, wherein you, what you would get is that you would get the detailed syllabus area session. So all of the IFRSs are being covered in detail in terms of, you know, what the content is all about and what you really need to know from that particular IFRS standpoint, giving you not only the theoretical, theoretical understanding of that particular IFRS, but also the practical practical knowledge of it because we will be doing various questions on those IFRSs in order to give you the strength that this is what you really need to know from that particular IFRS perspective. So we'll be talking, you know, we'll be talking on all of those IFRSs with various practical examples. And of course, along with that, you would also get the revision boot camp. The revision boot camp essentially covers the overall overall revision of key examinable topics and of course practice of the questions because that is going to be the key we'll practice the concept questions with me the comprehensive questions with me and of course past past exam questions also with me in order to know as to what examiner may calls out in the exam and towards the end what you really get is the mock exam also my friend which is where you are testing yourself in terms of you know where you are from the standpoint of preparation and of course that would help you in terms of assessing where you really, really stand from the examination standpoint. And guess what? FinTram also offers various scholarships, my friend, to the DeepIFR core students, wherein various benefits are there or are, are being given to the students, including the waiver of the initial, initial diploma in IFRS registration, which is like 9,000 rupees kind of a thing, which is excellent, my friend. You get a waiver of that. And of course, you, there are other benefits also that that are being provided to you. You can certainly reach out to them, and of course, they'll be help. They'll, you know, they'll be more than happy to help you in terms of taking your journey forward if you really intend to do the diploma in IFRS. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Moving on, my friend. We have now time for the Q and A's. I really wanted to spend, I would say, good amount of time in terms of taking questions. Because there you may be having many questions in your mind as far as the IFRS is concerned. So I just wanted to spend some time towards the end talking on and of course answering the questions, queries, concerns anyone may have so that I can kill it there and there. I'm happy to chat, my friend. Happy to hear out if you have any questions. You can post a chat. You can, of course, ask me live. You can, you know, just unmute yourself. You can speak up. I'll be happy to really answer any query that you may have. Anyone, guys, anyone has anything? I'll be happy to pick it up. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I had a question. Uh, so I'm a chartered accountant and I wanted to know if there are any exemptions or what is the process of uh, doing ACCA and if there are any exemptions exemptions available uh, for that matter. Uh, may I know your good name, please? Yeah, uh, Harsha Ditya. Harsha Ditya. So Ditya, yeah. you're talking about ACCA or you're talking about Diploma in IFRS? Mm, I'm talking about ACCA. Okay. okay. That's no, that's a different topic. So in, you know, ACC also provides various exemptions if you're a qualified chartered accountant. And if I'm not wrong, you would get, I think nine exams being exempted in ACCA. So out of 39 exams gets exempted. You only have to give four exams and uh, to, to qualify as a qualified ACC. And since you already have the, the have done the article chip, you have the, and the professional experience requirement being done. So effectively, just clearing those four exams will give you ACCA member status. So only four exams are required for that. Oh, that's great. And what about IFRS, diploma in IFRS? 
IFRS indeed, my friend, only have one exam. And you know, of okay. course, they cannot example that one exam <laughs> to you. Right. You have to give that one exam and qualify as the, as the diploma in IFRS uh, qualified uh, candidate. So only one exam to be given, as I said, in June and December. But if you can give that, sky's the limit. Got it. Thank you so much. You can certainly reach out to the you know to the number below uh, Aditya in case you you know want to uh, talk on more on the ACCA or the IFRS diploma and the team shall be able to help you in the best possible way. Sure, sure. Anybody else, guys? Anything that you may have, I'm happy to chat on. Don't lose the opportunity, my friend. We have the time now, and more we'll talk on, more we'll really discuss this on. Better it is for all of us. I am not able to hear you, ma'am. Can you please be louder? Hello? Can you hear me now, sir? Yes, better now. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I'm Danu Kirti. Hello? Uh, sir, how much study period is required to clear the exam, sir? Like uh, three months or like that? See, what I feel is, you know, that you're, and, and you're talking about diploma in IFRS course, right? As in diploma in IFRS exam, you're talking Yes, about. sir. So I, what I yeah. feel is, know that you really need, you know, four to five months of dedicated study to clear this exam. You know, while it is one exam and, you know, while it seems simple and of course, you know, many of the folks feel that, you know, I will just clear it like that but it is not that easy to, it takes time. It takes time in terms of, you know, uh, clearing this and there are good amount of uh, IFRSs that you have to go through. So if I really have to call out the time that you may need, I think four to five months is the time. Four months is something that I think bare minimum you need in order to really kill this exam in the best possible way. But anything less than that, you know, can be a risk. If you have four months of time, you can certainly kill this. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I have a query coming in the chat box. IPCC cleared, but don't have B, you know, BCom. Am I eligible? I think you are. You can check out to the number that I've given. You know, they are the specialist in it. They can certainly help you out in terms of, you know, what that would be. All right. Anything else, guys? Anyone may have happy to chat on. You know, there is a scholarship offer right now that is going on at Fintram, wherein various benefits are being offered not only on the diploma in IFRS course, but also ACCA, you know, they're offering benefits to on, on both the lines, you know, you can reach out to them and I'm sure they'll be happy to share in terms of, you know, the benefits that they're offering. You know, if there is any question that you may have that you are shy of, or you're not even like sure of, ask it. No question is a small question, you know, anything and anything and everything can be asked, not be worried on that. All right. Sir, please suggest the book of IFRS. Oh, oh, Abhishek, if you are a FinTram student, you don't have to refer any book, my friend. You know, we provide our own own study material and that is completely, completely equipped in terms of handling anything and everything from the exam standpoint. You don't have to refer anything. You're completely there. But if there is, if you're not a FinTram student and looking for a book, you can go for a BBP. I think that that should help you. You can go for the for the ACC content also, which is available on the ACC website. That should also be helping you. How is IFRS different from GAP? All right. So how is UK different from US? You tell me. You tell me who is UK different from US? Yes, sir. UK is different from US. No, because UK is UK. US is US. That is what IFRS and GAP is all about. GAP is acceptable in US. IFRS is acceptable, acceptable in the rest of the world. The, the, the standards, the accounting standards that are there in US are nothing but the US GAPs. The accounting standard in the rest of the world is international financial reporting standard. Like the accounting standard in India is nothing but India's. That's the difference, my friend. Now, if you really have to ask in terms of, you know, how uh, the standards differentiates, you know, that's a long, long drawn task. And of course, we will take it on in our sessions wherein we'll talk on as to what the IFRS is all about. Does that help, Ruhi? Yes, sir. See, I'm saying yes myself. Yes, sir. See, I get the yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ruhi. 
anybody else guys any concerns any questions happy to chat on do not do not lose on this time my friend this is the time for you to ask as many questions as possible as many things as possible for you to really take on the right decision for yourself i can tell you this is going to be the future for finance the more you'll spend time more you'll understand this better it is for you all right guys if we do not have anything then let's just wrap up it was pleasure being here i have provided the details of intram you know below over here that will help you in terms of reaching out to them in case you really want to talk on on the diploma in ifrs and of course about acca they can provide you all the details right from what the content and the structure of the course is all about and of course what they're offering including the scholarship that they have for student to pursue acca or diploma in ifrs all right my friends see you there that's what i wanted to cover in this session i will now see you in the in the session till then this pankaj tingra signing off mm -hmm.